The Bible says that Christians are dead to sin. So why do we still sin? <laughs> Stick around because that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. Now, there are some people that say if you're a Christian, then that means you are dead to sin. Therefore, you cannot sin. You will not experience temptations to sin. This is a doctrine called sinless perfection. It's the idea that Christians in this lifetime can reach a state of perfection and not being tempted in any way by sin. But we know that this is just not true of the Christian experience for two reasons. One, the Bible tells us very plainly that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. And John here is talking to a Christian audience, a church. But the second reason is that if you just look at your life, you know that's not true. You and I both know there are times where you struggle against sinful thoughts or temptations. Times where you have thoughts, do things, say things, think things that are not of Christ. And Jesus tells us, look, you have been told not to commit adultery. But I say, if you look at a woman with lust, you've committed adultery in your heart. Sin begins in the heart. So we can't deceive ourselves and say that we don't experience sin in this world. And yet at the same time, the Bible tells us, Paul tells us, Jesus tells us that we, if we are in Christ, are dead to sin. How can those two things be true at the same time? Well, again, we jump back into the scriptures and see what the word of God tells us. So Jesus says <clears throat> through the apostle Paul, are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? He then goes on to explain that we who've been baptized in the name of Jesus, into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death. So the same way that Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose again to new life, our old selves die when we're in Christ, when we're, when we're born again and we rise to new life. This is regeneration. And what that means is that we are no longer slaves to sin. Like we see it here in verse 5, verse 6 that the body of sin, we know that the old self was crucified so that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so we would no longer be enslaved to sin. So when we're in the world, before we're in Christ, we are slaves to sin. That means by nature, we do things that are sinful against God and his law. This is why you, <laughs> you don't have to teach a baby to lie, to steal, to cheat. And in fact, as you've grown, you know how much sinful passions within you grew sexual sin lying stealing all these kind of things that became so natural and god in his common grace has given us parameters to restrain our evil we have parents we've got the police you've got law these things restrain our evil but human history tells us how much sin we're capable of when it goes unchecked that's the natural man but when we're in christ we are dead to sin we no longer live enslaved to it we are freed to pursue Jesus and his righteousness. One great illustration of this in my life, before I was a Christian, I went to, used to go to a lot of house parties, do a lot of things that, you know, we're not going to talk about today. And then I came to Christ, I was saved, regenerated. And after that, there was another party that I was invited to. And initially I was tempted to go. I was tempted to go and, you know, do some of the things I used to do. But this time I didn't feel comfortable about it. I felt so convicted with the idea of going and doing sinful things that would dishonor Christ. And that is because I had died to sin. I was no longer a slave to it, where, where I could just casually go about disobeying God. But instead, conviction because of love for him was in me. And that's something he placed in me. And if you are in Christ, he has done the same work in you as well, that work of regeneration. So yes, even though we have died to sin, we are no longer slaves to it, we still are then told to put sin to death. And this is what he, again, he goes on to later say. We know that, verse 12, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Verse 11, consider yourselves dead to sin. Verse 13, don't present your, your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God. So the one who is dead to sin goes on to put sin to death. And that's exactly what Paul says again in Colossians 3, 5. Put to death what is earthly, therefore in you. Sexual immorality, all these things, put them 
to death. And you might be wondering, okay, cool. I'm struggling with sin. I'm struggling with these things. I'm struggling with temptations of the world. How do I overcome? And I want to tell you that God is a wonderful God who does extraordinary things through ordinary means. And I want to take you to what we call the ordinary means of grace. Ordinary means of grace are the things that God has given us as believers so we can continue to grow in holiness and rest in Jesus. So think about the day of Pentecost, right? 3,000 people came to Christ. Peter, ser- Peter preaches this mad sermon. The Holy Ghost comes down on them and they speak in tongues, all this amazing stuff. And 3,000 souls are added to that day. And what did they do immediately after? They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. That's the word of God. The fellowship, the breaking of bread. That's the, the Lord's Supper and prayer. And just devoting themselves to these things was how that church grew, how that church continued to grow in love for each other, but in love for the Lord. And these things are tools that God gives us. Devoting to the apostles' teaching, that's the word of God. Live in the word of God, ingest it, digest it, meditate on it, sing songs around it. Fellowship, being with your church, your local church, breaking of bread, regularly taking the Lord's Supper that reminds you of the one who died for your sin and rose again to show that the sin was paid for. Prayer, asking God to keep you and guide you and grow you. And these things will help you overcome sin in your life, help you rest in Jesus and serve him and honor him. And you might be thinking, but these things seem so basic. Well, we serve a God who does amazing things through very simple things. He does extraordinary work through ordinary means of grace. So I hope that video blessed you. Until next time, my Gs, peace and blessings.